All right, so this is a little video on the exercise of 6.2. If you were having trouble, first one's pretty straightforward. Just write a for loop, or you could do it with a while loop. Um, so we could do int i equals zero, and i is less than, um, what's this guy called, r for array, less than array.length, i plus plus, and then, then we're going to say uh, system dot out dot print line, and we're going to print uh, r bracket i. Boom! That should work. That was an easy one. Now, if you did it with a while loop, it would be pretty similar, but you'd have to do i plus plus in each one. This is what for loops are for, right? Check our code, see if it all came out right. Oh no, what did I do? What did I done do? Oh, I put a comma there. Like seriously? Okay, good deal. All right, moving on. Okay, so same deal here, but this time we're going to print um, just the odd indexes. So when I do a for loop, um, for i equals one, right? Oops, int i equals one, um, and then i is less than odd index array. So you don't want to program it to, you know. You don't want to program it so it would work just for this one. You don't want to say print one, three, five. You know, you don't want to just force it to do that. So you want one that could always work. And so just do i plus equals two. Um, so yeah, this will start at our index one and then jump to every time. So even if I made this like 25 long, it would this would work. Um, oops, forgot dot length. Remember, no uh, no parentheses or anything on there because it's an instance variable, automatically generated. And then system out print line. And then we're going to say uh, odd index array um, bracket i. Boom. Okay. Oh, sorry, I don't want to do that. Um, I'm, I want to match this letter here. Sorry, I misnamed that. This is R, and this would be R. I don't know why we made this into a uh, into a method instead of just putting it in main, but that's cool. That's cool. So I just have to match the integer array's name in the method because it wouldn't know what this was. Um, yeah, I don't think it would. I think it would cause an error. All right, so we'll run the code, check the code. Okay, no big deal there. All right, moving on. All right, so now we got one that's actually a little more interesting. So we're gonna make a method, a static method, um, which is why you'll see this. They use the class name, right, matching string, dot find string so it doesn't need um, an object which means in here is hard-coded the uh, array that you're going to be testing it against right so we're looking we're going to search through for carol um, and it's supposed to print out what what index that happens at if it happens or a negative one if it doesn't happen this one says right now if we run this it should say um, 1, because here's index 0, 1, 2. Okay, so we have a static, um, what do you call it? Static integer, or sorry, st string array. And we're going to go through and we want to find the string that is, you know, given. So right now I just got to make note of the fact that's called my string. 
So we need a for loop to go through the entire thing, just like normal, int i equals, we want to hit every item, um, zero, and then i is less than uh, arr, because I can use this since it's declared above it and we're inside the same thing. I can't spell length ever. Um, and then I plus plus. So this is, you know, standard for loop to hit every item. We're going to learn the for each loop um, next lesson, I think, which is a good one. Okay, so I want to go through every one. And if um, the item we're on, so the item we're on would be R bracket I. So if the item we are on dot equals, don't use equals equals, because dot equals is for strings, um, my string. So if the string they type in here matches the string I wanted in my array, then we're going to return um, I, right? So we're going to return the index that happens, and then we'll have an else, and we will return uh, I negative one. Oh, hold on, that would have been bad. I have to put the else outside. I can really, I don't even need the else because you know else doesn't make sense here because there's no if. Um, so we just say return negative one. Um, if I did that, if I would have done what I had before and it gets to the first item and it's not the name I typed in, let's say it wasn't Carol, it would be on item zero. It would go here. It wouldn't even do this because your item zero doesn't add. And if it went to the else, it would return negative one right away, even though it didn't look through the whole thing. So I want my for loop to go through the entire thing. And only if none of these hit, if none of them dot equaled, um, your string, then and only then will it return negative one. Remember, return kind of kills the whole program, or that part of the program. Um, so let's try it out, see if it works. Check code. See if I did anything silly. Nope, that works. That was a better one. Made you think a little. Okay, so now we get to a good one here, because it brings in some cool math. Fibonacci sequence is a cool sequence of numbers where you add the previous two to get that number. You have to start with two numbers though. So zero plus one is one, one plus one is two, one plus two is three, two plus three is five. So you can always do this, three and five. There's a lot of things in nature that kind of follow this. Like there's pine cones that have um, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen um, little spikes on them. There's a lot of natural things that follow the Fibonacci sequence. It's pretty cool. Um, okay, so first thing we got to do is make an integer array. And we haven't really had to do that before, so I kind of like that. Um, they basically listed our maximum amount of entries at 15, but when I create my array, I want to make this based off the variable, not the 15. So we're going to say um, integer array. So we put brackets, oops. Um, we're going to name this sequence because it told us to down here um, equals new integer array but this time I'm going to say max I want to make sure I know exactly how big it's going to be so this is the one where you create an empty one but it's going to be 15 long and it starts out with all zeros but then you start building it. So this was given to us. It creates, you have to start with the first two items there. Now we're going to make, we're going to make, um, the sequence. So we're going to overwrite it. Okay. So, um, we need a for loop. So we're going to, right now it's empty, right? Sequence exists, but it's empty. So we're going to go, um, four and we want to start. This is, thing you got to be careful of. You you already have the first two filled in at 0 and 1, so I want to start with i equals 3, or sorry, 2. i equals 2 and int i, but not int i. i is less than um, sequence dot length. 
because I already made it. Um, and then I plus plus. So we're making our standard for loop to go through the entire thing, but we're starting at two because we already have the first two filled in. I don't want to overwrite them. And now we want to think what the heck is, um, what, do, what do I do in the Fibonacci sequence? And basically what you have to do is access the two previous items. So I'm going to say the sequence item I'm on, which would be I, is going to equal the previous two added up. Sequence I minus one plus sequence I minus two. And this is why if you didn't start it at two, you're going to be in big trouble um, because you'll have an array out of bounds the very first time through. So it's going to go to the previous one and the one before that, add them up, and set it as your new one. And it'll go through the whole thing um, and reset each item. And it should go the right amount because it stops before the end, so it'll be on the last index. So that should create and store it. Then we got to print it. Right, so remember, we've done a print one before. We say for uh, int i equals zero, i less than sequence dot length. Hey, I spelled length right for the first time on the first try. i plus plus, and this is the standard um, system out print. Oh, not print line, because it said print them sideways, right? Um, so we're going to say, um, we're going to print sequence. Oh, bracket I plus blank. But something I noticed here is it wants us to actually do the sample output first. So above this, not inside the for loop, we'll print it every time. We're going to system dot out dot print line, and we're going to say um, Fibonacci sequence up to, and then we'll go max. Um, and then terms. So that one's a print line. So it's going to make, it's going to print Fibonacci sequence up to blank terms. And then the other one's down here, I think. Yeah, that's there. Um, all right, cool. Um, let's see if that works or if we have something bad going on. Because here it makes it. Here it prints it. This is, is this done for us? Oh, we gotta do that too. We gotta go make a new method about um, finding our index. Okay. So find index sequence. Okay. So let's do our code here and say we're given an array and a number we're searching for. So we're gonna say four. Um, I equals int I equals zero, and then I is less than kind of standard here, but use ARR dot length because you have a new array here. Let me pause this and make sure I get to where I need to go. Okay, so the last thing here we have a regular for loop, but make sure you use this array name because now we're in a method and it uses this array name. So it's standard, it goes through. We already wrote one like this, but this time since they're ints and you access each item i, you can use equals equals. You don't have to say dot equals, that's a string thing. And make sure you use n because they used n. And I'll return the index if that's the case, otherwise I'll have to return a negative one if it doesn't exist. Um, yeah, and that should work. I think.